What's going on guys? We're going to have a very interesting conversation today. You should watch this video from the beginning to the end because at the end I got some nice stuff for you. So <clears throat> there are a ton of videos talking about the so-called real estate crash. And one of the things I want to say is so-called because here's the thing. Where people want to live. There is no real estate crash. Actually, prices have gone up. And in many cases, people who are bidding on homes will have to go above asking price because let me explain to you what happened to me. I was looking at a condo, a very expensive condo. I went to look at it, toured it on a Saturday. I was there about 2 p.m. Now, this is the thing. This is a seven figure property, right? And what happened was other people had toured the condo before I did. And what resulted was there wasn't one buyer, there wasn't two, there wasn't three, there wasn't four. There were five people who were interested in this condo at the same time. And I put my offer in and then the first people who saw it they put in another offer that was uh, 50,000 higher than mine. And I saw what was gonna happen. This thing was gonna get way, way expensive. And if you know anything about condos, condos typically do not appreciate like a house. Um, literally, I looked at a lot of condos and I've noticed that many of them, where the owners had been in them for 20 years, were not really selling for that much more than what they paid for them. So. I went ahead and I said, okay, if we're going to play this game, we're going to have to spend more money. And I got like a bad feeling. I just got like a little feeling. And at this point I said, you know what? I told my real estate agent, I'm out. Uh, they have higher offers. We can let them go with that and we'll just move on. And I have been watching the real estate because I'm no longer participating in the real estate market. I've been watching the real estate for my favorite things, the failed Airbnbs these houses with coffee pots and slippers and towels on the bed. And literally I'm seeing more and more failed Airbnbs, which to me is not a failure of the real estate market. It is too many Airbnbs. It's just too many of them. And cause everyone got into it. But right now there is a ton of YouTube content talking about failed real estate market. The real estate market's going to crash. The economy is worse than it was in 2008. Um, and I could, I consistently see these narratives right now. There's a lot of people that think bricks, uh, Brazil, Russia, India, China are going to create a currency that's going to instantly destabilize the American dollar like next month. This is like on and popping and they're going to do all this other stuff. And I see a lot of information out here that is panically driven. And, you know, last year when I was doing a lot of critical reporting, I would call that, I wouldn't call it fear reporting, but when I was doing a lot of critical reporting, my views were way up. I was getting a lot more comments because here's the thing. I understand why a lot of people want the real estate market to crash. The real estate market could crash. You can go ahead, and grab you a piece of real estate at a good price. So I understand that. But here's the thing. Wanting a market to correct and the market actually correcting are two different things. And here's the thing. I'm not looking at cheap properties. When I was in the real estate looking, I wasn't looking at cheap properties. I was looking at seven figure properties. And these properties were being snapped up left and right. And because at that level, some of these properties are being paid for in cash. So they're not worried about a high interest rate from a mortgage because they don't have a mortgage. And one of the things that I've noticed is typically when the market changes and you're not ready, because once again, for me, the market is way, way too expensive because um, I've got to make some decisions coming up in about six months, 
I got to make some decisions. So we will see when we get there. But literally, there are dozens and dozens of YouTube creators who are talking about a real estate crash that is virtually not happening. There's not happening. Housing prices went down and then they went back up. And the mortgage rate, I think it's like 6%. And a lot of people who have a two or 3% mortgage rate, they're like, I like my house. I'm not selling. I don't want to sell my house where I've got a mortgage of like two or 3% to then go in again the market and then have to pay six or seven or even higher percent. So a lot of people are just sitting still. They're just kind of waiting out this market. So this creates the primary driver of why there isn't a real estate crash extremely extremely limited inventory basic business lesson when supply is less the price goes up this is a basic business lesson but one of the things i can i i, I see i see a lot of this um is there are so many people and once again i've done the critical analysis that 75, 80% of people in America, single person income make less than $40,000 a year. So typically you can have a couple, she makes 40, she makes 40, together they make 80, they have good credit, but they don't have enough down payment to get into this housing market because housing prices are starting to get really, really interesting. Because I was looking at some rentals and in Southwest Atlanta, that would be West End, uh, Campbellton Road. These houses are like 2,500 to 3,500 bucks per month. That's rental price. This is the highest rental prices I've ever seen in that area. And this is what's funny. Sandy Springs, the rental prices are pretty much the same as they were. So the rental prices in Sandy Springs and the rental prices in Southwest Atlanta are, are on par even though I feel, because I've lived in Sandy Springs for 12 years, you just get way more in Sandy Springs for your money, in my opinion. You get access, like, when I was living in Sandy Springs, there was five targets within 10 miles. There was one, two, three malls. There, there was all kinds of conveniences and luxuries and amenities. So here's the thing that I think for the people who want there to be a real estate crash who are craving, who are praying for a real estate crash is they want what happened in 2008 to happen again. And I actually knew a lot of people in 2008 got hurt. I knew a girl, she was an attorney. She owned a house and she was struggling because she, she could pay her bills, but she was struggling. She's like, why am I paying for a house that's not worth what it's worth? And I remember we went to dinner and I said, look, uh, this thing at, at some point is going to work itself out. Do you want to move anytime she soon? I said, no. I said, just keep paying your mortgage and it'll work itself out. And then their house actually went up about 200,000 in 2020 and she sold it. And now the house has gone up 300,000. And I told her, I was like, it was going to work itself out. But one of the things I'm seeing is this fascination of people wanting real estate to crash. And I think there's some psychological parts of that because, you know, on my other channel, I, I talk about rich folks and stuff. And essentially, if you're a person with good income and I, look, I'm not even say good, let's say great income, you're making $250,000 a year, you have good credit and you have money to put down, you have no problem getting the house in this market. None whatsoever. Because you can get a million dollar house if your debt to income is correct and you can pay for it. But one of the things that really gets me during these conversations is the facade of information on the internet. For the people who are in the housing market, who are looking to buy houses, these folks know there is no real estate crash. They're, they're, they're like, but the people who are outside of the market or the people who hope to get into the market are very much keyed in on these real estate metrics because 
there was one, two, three, four, five, six real estate channels I used to keep abreast of. And a lot of them were saying the same things. And I will tell you, there are markets where the real estate prices have dropped, but here's the thing. The real estate prices have dropped in markets that people don't really flock to. Real estate prices in Texas, going up. Real estate prices in Atlanta, going up. Real estate prices in Florida, going up. And I do see a correction where real estate prices will not shoot up 20 and 30% in a year. That, that cannot keep going on. But even, I want you to think, real estate since 2020 and it's 23 to 23 has gone up 30 percent and let's say real estate prices crash 10 11 percent it's still 20 percent higher than it was in 2020 so is that really a crash instead of really a crash when real estate prices are still significantly higher than they were in 2020 even though there has been a market correction and I don't think that this thing is over. I will make a critical um, prediction. I feel that we're gonna have another rate hike this year. I just feel we've got, uh, this is May, the fifth month of the year, which means it gives us um, seven more months. And I feel that we're gonna have another rate hike because here's the thing, the economy is so strange right now. I understand that a lot of companies are in trouble. Uh, shipping is a big indicator. Shipping is down across the board. And a lot of suppliers such as Target, Walmart, they have tons and tons of inventory in their warehouses and they're having sales to get rid of it. So there is some things that are brewing. But honestly, and this may be a very big proclamation and I, I, this video could die very quickly, but we may not have a recession this year. We may have a recession in 2024, but we may skip a recession this year. We will see, because this is the beginning of the second quarter, May, June, July. So in July, we will see what the numbers are. And then if we do not go into a downward spiral, if we don't have, because we, you know, of the, to, to, Accurate forecast a recession means that we're going to have two consecutive quarters of downward GDP plus some other things. I know the yield curve has inver inverted, the price of gold is at an all time high, cryptocurrency is doing some weird stuff, but the economy is really, really strange for the average person. And if you're not an average person, if you're a go-getter, you're doing stuff, you're building stuff, um, you may not have any clue to what's going on in the economy. Because um, once again, things are back. We've got football games, people are out and about doing stuff. So this whole notion of a housing crash is really, really, because once again, anyone that believes there's a housing crash and that's, you know, well, look, there's a few tiers to that. First of all, content creators. And once again, I am not going to insult any content creator. I'm not going to say any names. I'm not going to mess with them. If you can figure out a way to manipulate the YouTube algorithm to put market money in your pocket, my hat's off to you. Congratulations. I am not going to pee on your parade. What I will say is there are some content creators that have figured out that if they can forecast and come up with negative stuff consistently and on accurate record, they can put a lot of money in their pocket. Once again, I'm not gonna, I'm not here to hate the game. I'm not here to hate the game. And I just can't do that. I just cannot create a YouTube channel that's going to be based upon something that I personally, I don't know this from an top of mind or a conscious, I personally have experienced that the real estate market is not crashing. I have personally experienced it at a very high price level. This was a $3 million condo. $3 million condos typically don't move that fast. And this one was really nice and it was nicely laid out. It was gorgeous situated. It was in a good building. And you know, it's gone now. 
And one of the things is I've been seeing that these high price, because this is the price points I've been looking at. They've been going, 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 going. And I'm like, okay, so if these high price properties, which typically sit on the market longer are moving like that, I can only imagine what the cheaper houses are going for. Because this is one of the things I don't look at certain houses because um, I have certain tastes, certain things I like, certain things I want. So there's a lot of houses I just never look at. I don't look at anything in certain price ranges because I don't want to live in those neighborhoods. But, you know, I'm just sitting here thinking, you know, the real estate crash is like Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monster. Those are some old, old terms. But, you know, when I was a kid, there used to be all of these television shows about Bigfoot and the Loch Ness Monsters and these other creatures of the universe. And I feel that the real estate crash is a creature of the universe. It's just another creature of the universe. It's just another fictionalized creature of the universe because yes, there are parts of the country where housing prices have gone way down, but these are not the parts of the country where people want to live. That's the key. Any place that someone really wants to live, there is no real estate crash. You may see uh, some housing prices um, in certain markets go down lower than others because they were artificially pushed up by remote workers who were like literally, I could live anywhere and I could work anywhere. And now a lot of these companies is like, you got to come back to the office. That's a whole, that's going to be a whole nother video right there because um, a lot of people can work remote and a lot of people can't work remote. So, you know, this whole thing of the real estate crash and all this other stuff, it's very fascinating. And th this is something else too. Uh, there's some channels that I've come across that talk about the car market and how dealers, new cars are starting to sit because dealers want to put these dealer markups and they want to make more money. And I've noticed that these car review channels are getting crazy views crazy views and you know as someone who is selling cars <laughs> that, that, that that's a funny thing because i literally got approached five times today and i don't think any one of these jokers are going to actually show up to look at the car because their communication was quite sloppy but that's another video but yeah there is no real estate crash at any higher in any big city, Washington DC, Texas, parts of California, all of Florida, North Carolina, there, there's no real estate crash. And one of the things that I, I, I consistently see, because you know, in 2008, I remember seeing it, there was a real estate crash. And the real estate crash came because they would give anybody that was literally breathing a mortgage. Now, in many cases, you cannot even look at the house unless you have a pre-approval. They're, they're not even gonna let you look at the house. You could drive by it, but they're not gonna let you walk up in there unless you already have a pre-approval. And th this is one of the things that gets interesting because um, I did not have a pre-approval when I was looking at stuff. And I would tell them, it's like, look, you know, I'm not going to, because essentially, a pre-approval doesn't last forever. I think you, you get pre-approved, that's gonna last you about three months. And I was like, look, at the price point stuff, uh, I just want to actually know that I've made a decision to buy the property. And that was good enough to get me in because uh, you know I would let them know and they would let me see the properties. So, you know, one of the things that is happening is we have a lot of people who are living for bad information who are living for fundamentally flawed information. And they don't want to take the honesty of the reality that there is no real estate crash. There isn't. And I don't think there was gonna be a real estate crash next year, even if we have a recession. I don't think we're gonna, I mean, we may have a real estate serious correction five years in the future, once these new bills starts to catch up, because, um, it's crazy right now. It, it is really, really crazy. And we've got a lot of people who are hoping that they can get some property cheaply 
And look, look, let's go ahead and talk about that. You know who's gonna get property cheaply if there is a real estate crash? These big corporations that are sitting on trillions of dollars of cash. That's who's gonna get these deals. It's not gonna be the average mom and pop investors. I know someone who's in the real estate and she hasn't bought anything in the last two years. Cause she said the prices are just too high. You know, she's like, if I can find a deal, meaning a house that's deeply distressed, that's owned outright and the seller wants to make a deal and sell it, she may do that. But she said, that's been really hard to find. And you know, this chick sitting on 25 houses. So, you know, I've known her for a while and she's done this. And you know, it, it's a really strange market. And when I say strange, I mean, literally, we went to a position where housing went down, corrected, and then it went back up in a matter of months, not years, months. It went down, then it went back up. So this is what I mean. We're in a very strange real estate market. And honestly, I don't really know what I'm going to do. I don't know because I got I got six months to make a decision uh, because, you know, living the high rise life, I've done that. I'm kind of over it. And I have the, I'm craving a house. I'm craving more room. So that's probably going to be my next step. But typically we have got to actually pay attention to what's going on currently from a realistic standpoint. So if you're one of those people who thinks the real estate market is crashing, I know that you're not in the real estate market. You're not looking at properties. You're not paying attention. And if you're in a place where the price has come way down, you're probably living somewhere that a lot of people don't want to flock to. If you're living in a neighborhood where houses are 50 to 75,000, and this is something I heard from a lot of real estate investors, those houses, even though you can get them cheaply, they don't appreciate that well. So you can get them cheaply and stick a renter in there and cash flow and make money, but these houses are not going to dramatically appreciate because they're in an area that cannot handle this. So that's one of the things. All right, so once again, let's talk about me revamping my whole life. I'm revamping the channel, I'm revamping my training, I'm revamping everything. And one of the things I did and this was something I thought about for months. I, I created the money course and I gave it away for free and I made the decision that's always going to be free. You can get in that for free. Now the next course, which is the foundational, how to get stuff done. I knew when I actually started doing this course that I wasn't going to get the swell that I'm going to get next month when I go ahead for the corporate game, because what I'm doing is I'm giving you what you need. And a lot of you are unfamiliar that you actually need this stuff, how to put together a process, how to get stuff done, how to organize your day, how to organize your night. Many of you are not really hip to that at the moment, but as we go along, cause once again, I'm, I've just, I put my, my, put my sword in the soil and I'm going to give you in the beginning, the stuff that you need. I'm going to, and also, uh, if you want a brand new laptop, the time to get in now, because we're giving away a brand new laptop, uh, the end of May or the first, first of June just depends first day of June, you know, whatever I do it, I'll do it either in the May or the first day of June. And then I will ship out this laptop to a student. You're not going to get the laptop if you're in the free course. Sorry, that's not happening. But if you're a paying member of the productivity course, Someone's going to get that laptop and then I got to sit down and think of other stuff that I'm going to do for June because June, July, August, because there will be some YouTube training. There will be a lot of stuff that's coming up. So, you know, during the revamp, I understand that the beginning is hard because this is the position that I have put myself in. I look at myself as a beginning YouTuber, even though I have established channels and I do have an audience and I want to say thank you to everyone that's in that audience. I really appreciate you. Um, I look at it as I'm starting from the beginning. I look at it as this is normal. I look at this as this is the reality of the situation. So if you want to learn how to do stuff like I did not create any new training today, that's going to happen tomorrow and this weekend. 
there's going to be a new training for you to get things done, to create a system for you to get things done, for you to do things in a correct manner, because essentially the money course and this foundational course, I'm doing it in a certain series of orders, because here's the thing, you need to get your money straight now before you start making more money. Because if you get your money situation straight now, then you start making more money, then you can see your money stack up. And then doing this, this productivity hack, um, this is gonna teach you how to do things because I looked at my students. I had some students go through my courses and they just did amazing stuff. And then I had some students who did absolutely nothing. And this made it really, really hard for me to do testimonials because I knew that if I did a testimonial on this person that had some unique and special situations, that wasn't going to be really fair. It, it, it just wasn't because uh, one of my students who literally just took off and created a hundred thousand dollar a month business, uh, her grandmother died and left her a bunch of money. That made the difference because she had the money to build the business and invest in the business. And if you're a regular person out there on a regular income, you don't have that. So I, I, I really didn't like, you know, I could put this stuff up, but you know, once you get into the deeper layers of the story, it's not exactly what it sounds like. So that's one of the reasons I didn't do it. But once again, I want you to get into the productivity course and tomorrow we're going to get deeper into some more stuff and we're going to get into the doings and some other things. And I, I share some stuff in this course that I don't really share on YouTube. I've never really talked about this stuff on YouTube. So if you want access to this special information, go below, there's gonna be the link below. And what I'm doing is, since I'm building it out and I'm gonna take as much time as I need to build it out this month, uh, there's special discounting. I didn't do the promo code because, you know, it's just a brand new course. Uh, just go ahead and get in, get access. And tomorrow you're gonna to get new training and this weekend you're gonna get new training. So go ahead and get in this course and position yourself to be really successful this time next year because we're going to be talking about this in the process of building and setting yourself up all right so the link's below i'll see you guys in the next one